Have you ever heard of the expression, you can't pour from an empty cup? Well, this applies to studying. You can't keep studying when your motivation is empty, when you have no energy left, when you cannot focus. You shouldn't be studying anymore. Today, I'm gonna to introduce a concept which has revolutionized my life and I call it your attention budget. If you can understand and maximize your attention budget, you're gonna change your life at uni. So what is the attention budget? The idea is you have X amount of attention to spend per day. I like to think about this as a full water bottle. At the start of the day, the water bottle is full. And throughout the day, you can pour this water, you can pour your energy and attention into various tasks. And the size of your attention budget day to day will vary based on different factors like your mood or if you menstruate. Like there are certain days where your ability to focus and be productive are just less. Based on how much you slept, how well you've been eating, how emotionally burdened you are, even neurodivergence. Like some of my best friends have ADHD and their capacity to donate attention to different tasks is just different. So at the start of the day, it's generally highest. We have a high attention budget. Throughout the day, we're pouring our attention to these different activities. But the thing is, activities aren't equal. Certain activities enhance our ability to concentrate. Others, decrease it a lot. Some tasks make it so hard for us to even open the lid and start pouring attention because it's just so hard to start. Others pop the lid off and guzzle our attention without even trying. Imagine when you go on TikTok, you are pouring away so much of your attention and energy without even trying. It's so draining because it's hard to stop pouring and it's very effortful to put that lid back on. By the time you finally get that lid closed and you try to pour some energy into studying, it can often be very hard to take that lid off again and start putting your energy there. It can be so hard to focus, so hard to get motivated. And this is because research shows that it can often take around 20, 25 minutes to even get into a state of deep work. It can take you literally 25 minutes to get the lid off of that bottle and start pouring your energy into a study task. And then there are some activities which you can put throughout your day in order to increase this attention budget. So things like doing a meditation where you're forcing yourself to really focus, exercise, moving your body, all of these things, rather than draining your attention budget, will get it back up. And this mindset really changed my life because I think so many of us assume that throughout a day we have an infinite capacity to pour our energy into the tasks that we have to do. But we really don't. And being so mindful of where we're currently putting that energy means that we can start to manipulate it in a better way. So before I go into how I use the attention budget in my own life, I think there are four questions that I would love you to ask yourself. You can think about this throughout the video. Firstly, which tasks are diminishing your ability to focus? Second, which activities are powering up your ability to focus? Maybe it's exercise, meditation, conversations with friends, all of that. Number three, how are you dividing your day based on these activities? And lastly, number four, which tasks do you wish you had more motivation and energy for? So based off of this metaphor, based off of this self-awareness that we try to create, um, I'm gonna tell you a bit more about how I carve my study days. This is the only reason I'm able to study for such long periods and still be productive, still be high energy, is this awareness of fluctuating motivation. So before every study day of university, I will have planned my day in advance. I love on a Sunday looking at my next week and doing a high level plan scheduling in okay cool like i have an exam here i need to schedule study sessions like this i have a class here i have a class here and doing a rough time by time schedule of each of my days including social activities exercise meditation all of it but you can also do this the night before the thing is it takes so much mental effort just to decide how to live our days where should i go what should i do with who this takes so much attention and thinking by the time you've done that you're mentally tired you're pouring and pouring your attention into this effort a full choice so if you can do that in advance you've already got more energy to donate to studying i will always start my day with yoga or meditation i don't know if you've ever meditated before but i think there's a misconception that you just sit and breathe but really it's a practice of learning to be aware of your thoughts and observe them without judgment and then constantly teach yourself to bring your attention back to the breath or back to an anchor and you know every time you get distracted bringing your attention back and so in many ways you are training your ability to focus so that when you then study you can stay there for long periods 
in this deep focus mode without getting distracted. Then I know that realistically, I only have a few hours every day where I can have deep, deep, deep focus. So I always try and plan the really massive elephant tasks in this time of deep focus. There are so many different types of tasks, right? Like there's replying to emails, which is not that effortful. It doesn't really need much thinking. And then there's scripting a YouTube video, which for me takes a lot more effort, thinking, time, planning. And so making sure I haven't wasted all my attention on these admin tasks and instead putting them at the end when I have less attention at the end of the day and really tackling this task while I have the energy for it. Personally, I know that I work better alone too, so I will try to study alone in the morning. I also won't really go on social media that much in the morning because I'm really just devoting my time and energy to these deep work tasks. And then as my attention starts to fade throughout the day, I can get on social media, post my photos, scroll a little bit, study with friends in the afternoon because then it's also fun, it's a change of scenery, they give me energy, and it's in the rest of the day that I'll do the low effort tasks. I'll sit with friends in a cafe doing pomodoros and be making flashcards or doing class review, doing my readings, nothing that requires the deep, deep creative thinking that the earlier tasks did. It's also really important in a good study day not to have feelings of guilt, if you can avoid it. I've worked so hard across my years of university since A-levels, since GCSEs, to detach my sense of self-worth from the amount of work that I get done or the grades that I'm achieving because it's just very toxic and unhealthy if you're constantly judging yourself based off of how much you've got done and instead focusing on the joy and the gratitude within the learning process and I think bringing myself back to that every day just makes studying more enjoyable. It reminds me why I'm here, why I'm studying, and it's not just for a piece of paper at the end of my degree. Another tip is sanctity of space. You can watch my recent YouTube video for this, but it's basically the idea that your study environment should be just for studying. And the more of a study mindset you can create in your space, the easier it is to have the motivation to finish tasks. And finally, throughout my day, I will take so many breaks intentional breaks. By fourth year of my degree, I have a general understanding of what makes me happy, what gives me energy, what motivates me, and it will be things like seeing friends, doing a meditation between study sessions, going to nature, dancing, doing a workout. For me, workouts are so important to like re-energize my day. These things make me want to go back and keep studying. In the cognitive science of learning, there's this principle called interleaving, which is the idea that you study one subject and then you place different subjects, different things that you're learning in between, and then come back to the original thing you first studied later on. And it's a great way to compound learning because you're forcing your brain to go back over that information after having switched gears. And so this is something I'll frequently do I'll be studying something and then I'll switch activity, maybe go for a run and then come back to that activity later and I know that it's more likely to stick in my brain. Work smarter, not harder, my friends. I also just want to say we are all so different. I have friends who can hyper-focus for 20 hours without eating and produce incredible results or literally procrastinate for a week. I have other friends who love studying from bed, which for me, like I can't really do because I just get tired. I have friends who get exhausted mentally by exercise and it does not help them focus. So you just need to figure out what works for you and have more self-awareness throughout your day of how activities affect you. Pay attention to your energy budget and then spend it well. So you've spent some of your very limited attention and energy budget today on YouTube on this video. That is amazing and I'm so grateful that you're in this corner of the internet. My question to you is, how will you spend the rest of your attention budget today? And if it's hard to close the lid on YouTube, then I inspire you to do it. If there's something you're putting off, I empower you to go do it. My casual magic of the day is this lovely tea and the gorgeous views from my apartment. Um, it's just another good day to be alive. It sounds cringy, but it's true. I'm sending you all so much love. No matter what's going on in your life, you are enough. You've got this. Have a great day. Bye, guys.